Good morning all. I have yet another amazing Leela chess game to show you. This is against Stockfish 6. Uh, the ID of Leela is 467 here. Yeah? Stockfish 6 is on one CPU and it's from a thematic position. E4 from Leela. We have the start position being the Sleeman defense. So John D uh, took up a suggestion of mine for stack exchange for aggressive openings and produced some remarkable games, including this one. Uh, so this is one of the more intriguing, as we're about to see. So white here, Leela Chess playing uh, white, played knight c3 here. F takes, knight takes, knight f6. Queen e2 was played. An alternative, theoretically, is knight takes f6. But this is quite a, a main move as well. Queen e7. White castles, d5, knight g3. We have e4, knight d4, queen c5, c3, bishop d6, d3, black castles, d takes e4. Now here, after knight takes d4, c takes, queen takes d4, bishop e3, black plays the provocative queen e5. We have f4, queen drops back, and now e5. So this is provoking some weaknesses, really, because like f5 is potentially vulnerable. And in fact, black plays knight g4, not minding the possibility here of an imbalanced endgame. Uh, white could, by force, in this position, play e takes d6. But this position, after takes here, for example, uh, is not it's not totally a clear advantage in fact for white white black you know has an extra pawn and Lila avoids this continuation quite fascinating Lila actually goes for a bit more with rook f3 so renewing the threat of e takes d6 so the bishop moves and now a uh, a3 is potentially on the cards but first we have Bishop d4. So very interesting position. Bishop d4. C5. A3. Bishop a5. Uh, if c takes. This scenario here of the bishop d3 is actually quite nice for white with the mobile pawns. And in fact, uh, if we take this bit further, you know, white could end up playing against d4 with, with a big advantage. So we have actually bishop a5, bishop c3, and now bishop b6. And potentially black has got all of what uh, it wanted. There's potential pawn mobility here, and there's potential uh, use of the f5 square if this knight's kicked. Now, so if this knight was kicked, it wasn't actually. h3, this position where black gets a, a good lock on the f5 square is actually not too bad for black at all. In fact, black starts to move his its pawns in the center like this. And this is extremely nice for black. Black has a small edge there. But Lila actually avoids all of this with h3. There's a very clever, ingenious move played in this position. So I've given you a clue. It's not h3. I wonder what you would play here if you had the white pieces. If I give you five seconds to pause the video. It's a little bit like our last video, to be honest, a bit of a counterplay crushing, but also king attacking move with one single shot. So a move which simultaneously ticks the boxes for squashing counterplay and reinforcing attacking potential. It's fascinating, absolutely fascinating move. Okay, prepare to be shocked. Bishop c4. Yep. Bishop c4. Okay, what you might ask is this. Now, black actually took this, testing it. Now, f5 was played, and there's a me immediate idea now that the this row has been opened up. There's queen takes c4 check if white another move. Queen takes c4 check and then taking the knight. That's the immediate threat to be addressed. And black does address that with rook f7. 
uh, if king here as an alternative this position shows it's quite dangerous for black for example rook f4 and then f6 there's a beautiful line here let me just show you g takes what does white play here if i give you five seconds a beautiful line indeed making use of the attacking bishop which just installed itself like in our previous game there was an attacking bishop which also was squashing counterplay as well e takes f6 here because after takes actually well the queen's protected it's not a queen tank but there's f7 mating here yeah, after queen e5 bishop takes is mating so yeah it seems as though black uh, has to navigate very very carefully so king h8 we see that rook f4 is dangerous um, if we look at some alternatives at move uh, 22 uh, you can have a look at the uh, PGN analysis link I'll give you in the description as well knight takes um, sorry not knight takes so rook f7 was played uh, okay let's let's just go with that there's quite a bit to uh, just just to show also the threat that I mentioned you know if bishop d7 check and then taking on g4 so rook f7 was played addressing this diagonal and now we have e6 and you can see that both bishops are shut down at the moment and white has extra pawn mobility so there's a lot of positional factors white is getting a pawn now at least uh, for the piece and a really aggressive pawn structure here is this enough compensation though so the knight's hit uh, so the knight goes back and in fact uh, leader here plays knight e4 so this is actually really interesting trying to undermine get get access to g7 black actually uh, didn't take on e4 let's have a quick look knight takes queen takes even with the check it doesn't really uh, matter this position is actually really dangerous uh, after say uh, f6 g takes check here this is a really dangerous position continually threatening because like e7 check now um, black has b5 tactically queen d5 and here rook b8 is uh, possible uh, potentially if e7 check though that's uh, pretty devastating so queen queen d5 uh, here e7 check rook takes e8 queening uh, this is very good queen c6 hitting both rooks and black is uh, losing material here with white gaining a big advantage so see so yeah, some interesting variations there on knight takes e4 that needs to be factored in so we see uh, actually bishop c7 which allows knight takes f6 and now this this is uh, quite a passive pawn and it can be probes later as we'll see so g takes f6 uh, we have just just for a moment though if rook takes f6 you might consider this position is also very dangerous with this there might be an idea of rook d7 coming up or rook d8 check even uh, because of the idea of e7 check still so if we have this position uh, king g7 queen g4 this is uh, pretty terminal for black with an idea of queen h4 mating so yeah there are some really dangerous variations but uh, black is probably wise to play g takes so we have a4 and yeah black's not doing anything for a moment the count play is really shut down so it does seem to be quite a deep dynamic peace sacrifice for this position b6 rook d1 a6 and the queen switches over over here keeping an eye on f6 
Now, if only white could play rook g3, well, there's bishop takes, because then there's rook g6. And if f6 falls, then that's big trouble. b5. b4 is played, actually. So for the moment, this interlude of some play on the queen side, just playing a piece down. c4 is played. Uh, it's quite dangerous here. If takes here, then b takes. There's always the possibility of bishop b4. So if black have a dead taking, there's a possibility of bishop b4 here. Uh, the queen would have to return back to protect f6, but then bishop e4. So, yeah, this, this has to be facts and implications for lifting the blockade. Uh, so black has to be careful, c4. And now white just casually plays a5, sealing a bit more of the queen side. So it's black, well, what are you doing here? We have bishop b8, rook d5, rook a7. So it does seem to be a really intuitive... Uh, position to head for rook b7 king f1 some shuffling around here but now leader finds what really does seem to be one of the best technical moves in the position according to my engine uh, that idea i mentioned before rook g3 to g6 can be achieved without losing the rook by going here then here then here then here and leader starts that little maneuver rook e3 <laughs> believe it or not yeah because once the rook's there it's on f6. What what can help f6? So rook a7, rook e4. Yeah, one more step for Lila. Rook g4 to g6 is coming. Rook b7, rook g4. Now there's a big threat of rook g6. Yeah, this, this is causing desperation now. This rook g6 is really, really powerful. It's going to be devastating for black. So Lila uh, is in a crushing position. Stockfish realizes it's, it's a really big problem now, this position. And desperately plays bishop takes e6. Uh, let's see. So if, just to show rook a7, rook g6. What does black do here? Like this, rook takes f6. Black's going up, losing the queen. It'll be hor horrific. Or even worse, you know, getting mated. You know, with rook takes f8, double checkmate. So basically, this this is uh, prompted this uh, to sack the bishop. Now Lila just doesn't take that actually, just pins the bishop instead. And we have bishop e5 trying to interrupt, but now we have rook d takes e5 trying to break down this diagonal. So again, a positional kind of undertone breaking open this diagonal. So the tactics really have a human positional undertone at all stages here. We have queen d6 being played. On f takes e5, Bishop takes e5 check. This position is leading to check and mate. So yeah, that's uh, <laughs> not not possible. So queen d6, king g1, bishop d5. It's pointless to play queen d1 check here because of rook e1. And then say bishop d4. This position, white's going to end up with a big advantage there a bishop up in fact so uh, we have bishop d5 uh, rook e2 bishop g8 rook e8 so f6 is really under fire again white's threatening to take and then bishop f6 rook b f7 h3 queen d3 rook takes f8 yeah i mean it looks as though black uh is compelled to to do something active because things like rook two to e6 are threatened. King can go to h2 as well now, so that was nifty just to give king h2. So that's why this is a very big threat now, rook one, rook two to e6. So that's why here uh, this move is played and it basically is losing the exchange. Yeah, queen takes c3 is played uh, to try and take out. You know, otherwise bishop takes f6 is, is mating. So taking out this, this dangerous bishop but at the cost of being the exchange down. Sorry, being the exchange down here. Uh, so we had queen takes c3, rook takes, bishop takes, king h2 now, tucking the king away. h5, and the game was adjudicated here as a win for white. As an example continuation, rook e7, king g8, queen f4, 
queen d3, rook a7, c3. This example continuation, why it's just the exchange up really, uh, and it's going to be collecting pawns and going to be queening uh, the a pawn in this example. So, anyway, this was another remarkable game. Just conceptually, it's this moment in the game Leela has found in this game and also the previous game featured on the channel where there was a simultaneous shutdown of potential counterplay and also reinforcing attacking potential done at the same time virtually with with a key move so that is absolutely beautiful chess in my view it's like controlled aggression with minimal counterplay fantastic stuff to witness i hope you got something from this game comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much